Hey guys, it's Matt. Just like yesterday, this is proof of not Nilk series, but with a completely different example. Just one way the not Nilk is out to remove history, to remove what once was, to re eliminate all the breadcrumbs to a world that for some reason it doesn't like. This is just one example of the thousands or tens of thousands of ways it does that. It's not the video I intended to make today. I came across it this morning. I think you'll find it interesting. After 33 thrilling years of bringing you the latest news, reviews, and insight from the ever-involving world of gaming, it is with a heavy heart that we announced the closure of Game Informer. From the early days of pixelated adventures to today's immersive virtual realms, we've been honored to share this incredible journey with you, our loyal readers. Coming up, I'll play a few more segments from this video from It's a Gundam. I like how he points out and goes after all the woke crap. We typically focus on movies, but it seems like it's been happening in the gaming industry for quite some time. The ridiculous need to somehow try to satisfy DEI requirements. Now the 33 pops up, but that's not in any way the reason I'm making this video. The 33 is a reality marker. Let me tell you what I believe the 33 is to me at this point in time. When I see it, it says, Matt, pay attention. There's something the not milk is up to. There's something, there's a reality clue here. It's a marker. The word marker is the best uh, definition, or if I had to pick one word to associate with the 33 at this point. Marker on its own does not mean evil. To me, it means pay attention. Reality is about to show you something. Let me show you quickly what just happened to me. This sort of thing happens all the time when I make videos. I'll pull the image out long on the screen. I'm gonna say something or record something over this image, but I don't wanna go short. So I pu sometimes I'll pull it out if I'm on the wrong setting to 30, 40 minutes. And then when I'm done recording, I'll just cut the rest of the image off. Well, in the segment talking about the 33, I pulled the image out, making the, <laughs> making the video three minutes and 33 seconds. The 145 is where I stop recording that segment. Then I go bang, 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 cut off the rest of the image and move on. Well, again, okay, yeah, I was talking about 33, 333, but I just want to mention to you, I don't talk about it that often as I make videos. This happens all the time, not necessarily three minutes and 33 seconds, but the 33 as I make videos in terms of segments that I pull in. Well, Matt, obviously you're prone to notice the number, so it seems like it's coming more than say other numbers would come at random. I'm aware of that and I discount for that. I don't believe so. I believe it comes much more often than it should and more than other numbers, especially when we're diving into reality topics like this. The segment coming up is the reason for this video. When Game Informer went down, they deleted their entire internet archive, every game review, everything posted to the web. There's no reason to do this, guys. They're, they're, of course, all the um, reviewers, in including uh, It's a Gundam, oh, it's just to save money. Oh, sure. Uh, just leaving text on a website? I mean, literally kids in high school uh, could afford that. It, this is not about saving money. It's about removing history. If that wasn't bad enough, everything got wiped, leaving archivists with little to no time to save anything. I've seen corn companies shut down with more of a grace period for its coomers than GameStop. But let's face it, GameStop wanted to save money. Not now, but right now. However, along with the end of the longest running U.S. gaming print magazine, another aspect of Game Informer that won't live on is the video game's publication's entire digital archive. The GameInformer.com domain name now forwarded to the landing page, which only displays the shutdown announcement. All of the Game Informer website's internal links now all forward to the same page, meaning previously published news articles, reviews, and other content can no longer be viewed. Remember when Elon Musk cut some servers at Twitter with a pocket knife to save money? Pretty much GameStop did the same thing. So let me summarize what happened. The AI overview says, yes, GameStop owned Game Informer. Well, it doesn't, it didn't own like past tense. If something's completely shut down, it still owns. It still maintains the rights. The AI doesn't understand <laughs> how the world works. Thanks, AI overview. Thanks a lot. Um, it owns Game Informer a video game magazine and website for 33 years before, <laughs> before we get, this, this world is nuts, before shutting it down in August of 2024. 
The point is that um, it's a Gundam stressed. It was shut down in like a day or two. They had the next issue 70% done. It was almost like that, per the not know, GameStop had to wait 33 years. Is it 33 years? Oh, now it's 33 years? Shut them down. Yeah, but they're about to publish the next. Don't, don't you want to give them a week or two weeks? Fuck them. Shut them down and they, in like a day and then wipe out the internet. Okay, the way I'm about to put this is a little bit of a stretch, but GameStop is like one of the biggest companies in the world. It's not Coca-Cola company, I know. But um, see, they, they, they didn't need the savings of shutting down the Game Informer website, just maintaining a website like probably some kid in high school could have done. Well, Matt, there's a lot of video on that website, and that costs money. It's GameStop. They didn't have to screw everybody and wipe out the last 33 years of their existence. There's a reason why they intentionally wiped out the Internet Archive. There's no doubt about it. Is any family member listening going, oh, here we go with the conspiracy again? Oh, sure. The family can't understand what's going on here. They know Matt was six in his class in high school and eight semester deans listed Penn State summa cum laude. The only way they can justify it, and this is what I was told right to my face, is, well, I, I said back to the person, so wait a second, why do you think I do this? You, you, you don't think I believe in what I'm putting forth? You don't think I believe in the videos that I'm making? And the person, they didn't say no, but they said no in a roundabout way. And I said, well, then why do you think I'm doing this? Well, for ego, Matt. For ego, are you uh, 90,000 subscribers, uh, all these comments, um, so I'm doing this for my ego and to get some donations and you don't think I believe in the video topics, I'm just kind of making all this up? They can't reconcile it any other way. They, they, have, they, they still see me out, say, at a uh, family function, which, you know, who, who knows the last one I've been at, but they see Matt as still as an intelligent, uh, rational, whole individual, so there's no possible way Matt could believe in what he's putting forth on the web. It's the only way they can come to grips with it without cognitive dissonance that'll drive them over the edge, I guess. Look at the last uh, line or so. By 2011, it had become the third largest magazine in the United States. Game Informer, the third largest magazine. What, right behind Time Magazine? GameStop. I understand. Well, Matt, magazines aren't really viable in the internet. I understand why maybe they would move away from it in 2024. That's not really the point here, is it? Would you do it in a day or two without telling anybody and then wipe the internet clean? Every single game review, gone. Every post, gone. Over 25 or however long the internet has existed for Game Informer. There were games before the internet. Every post, every comment just wiped in a second. Who would possibly do that? There's only one reason. Well, this would never fly in normal circles, this crazy conspiracy stuff, because the not milk needed to wipe out the history. And it's, I'm, not, I'm just focusing on one example. There's many other examples I'll show you. Well, I, you know, I'm not going to spend two months of research on this. I make five videos a week. But it's doing this in a lot of different places. Unfortunately, the shutdown has removed online archives is becoming all too common in the digital media industry as a whole, resulting in content being lost to time. Most recently, Paramount decided to take down MTV's news website along with the digital archives more than a year after the news organization shut down. Reporters as well as fans of the organization lamented the loss of years of interviews and other MTV news related content. And while the Internet Archive likely has a good amount of Game Informer's content archived, Internet Archive documents are typically incomplete snapshots of originals with altered formatting and missing elements. Basically, this shows you how stupid Paramount is. They could have easily taken all those MTV interviews and put them on YouTube would have made passive income for years. All they had to do was force some intern to do it for a few months. But no one at the top has that kind of vision or foresight. They just look at things and go, it's losing money, turn it off. I need to give myself a bonus this year. Yes, it continues to be very frustrating for us. Just returning to the same old toy box because the answer must lie in there between the reality bookends. Oh, this CEO is just stupid. He, he could have, anybody knows they could have made income by placing all of those archives on YouTube, income through ads, and they're just stupid. They, every CEO's just stupid. Disney, they don't know how to manage Star Wars. The writers are bad. They could never possibly go to, to another toy box. And underneath, underneath Pandora's box, there's a big sign that says, there's things going on in this world you don't understand, and it's all intentional. It's on purpose. It has to be 
the, between the reality bookends. The CEOs uh, for MTV News to take all that down. Uh, the people at Paramount are just stupid. Yeah, they're they, they're stupid, and the gamers and the movie reviewers. Yeah, they they know more. Yeah, can it, will one of these guys maybe someday, uh, four or five decades from now, will one of these guys just stop and say, maybe there's something else going on here. But in a, in a way, they're on the download too, and it's not po that sort of um, seeing through the matrix is not possible for anybody on the download. If you just complain about woke and social justice warriors and DEI requirements all day long, well, that sounds like things that we want people to say. But it's just another form of the download. There's a part of the It's a Gundam video where he said something like, "Well, at least the Internet Archive should have a lot of its same." Saved, but it'll be fragmented or hard to find. I'm not sure how he put it. Then I look at this Internet Archive, and it looks like they're trying to take this out. I don't know what this is. I've never heard of Internet Archive before. But there's lawsuits accused of illegally digitizing thousands of old records. I don't know what's here. Let's just take a look at this. A San Francisco federal court is host to a fight between a nonprofit enterprise with a mission to provide, quote, universal access to all knowledge and a group of record companies that own the rights to songs recorded by the likes of Bing Crosby, Billie Holiday, and Miles Davis. In a Wednesday decision authored by U.S. District Judge Maxine Chesney, the record companies drew first blood. It looks to me, guys, a quick note to the bot, it's doing it again. Do real humans write and think like this in a Wednesday decision? In a decision that came on Wednesday, or that came this Wednesday, authored by U.S. District Court Judge Maxine Chesney, the record companies drew first blood. Come on, bot. It's time to really improve. You're really pissing me off. The case began in New York in 2023 when seven record companies launched a copyright suit against Internet Archive along with its founder and funder, Brewster Kale, and his personal foundation, as well as George Blood, LP, a Philadelphia-based audio engineer that has digitized hundreds of thousands of recordings from old 78 RPM records. Internet Archive, based in San Francisco, describes itself as a non-profit library of millions of free books, movies, software, music, websites, and more. Guys, could Internet Archive actually be a good guy? I mean, it seems to be. Could the personal foundation of funder Brewster Kale actually be righteous and on the side of real people? I guess one might slip through the cracks here and there, and maybe that's why they're trying to take it out. Here come the lawsuits. I don't know. So Internet Archive was digitizing and storing and making available for use old records, old vinyl records. And I know the copyright laws are more restrictive today, and I know there's that dividing line. I didn't know what it was, so I researched it, and I got AI Overview. Yay! AI Overview came Oh, I love AI Overview. In United, thank you, AI. In the United States, songs copyrighted before January 1, 1978. Put your hands out. Identical. That's the year. 1978 is the key year. But I didn't realize it was this punitive. They must have changed even this. 95 years from the date of publication or registration. That means Bing Crosby's White Christmas, say 1940. 95 years. You can't get access for free Bing Crosby's White Christmas till the year basically 2035 or so? I mean, you've got to be kidding me. And it's even worse after 1978. It's the year of the author's uh, or the writer's death plus 70 years. This means nobody can get access for free Jeremy Spoken Pearl Jam until 2100 or so. Or maybe that son of a beach will download his consciousness into a Johnny's Depp type of transcendence. Then you'll never be able to get that extra 70 years because technically you'll never be dead. Here are some pretty good points about fair use that's also in the article. I'm not going to read this. I'm going to talk a bit in this section. I'll just leave this up, uh, screenshot it or pause if anybody wants to read this. In general, guys, fair use or case history or case law regarding fair use is very much on our side. I mean, there are certain elements where if I use a 10-second clip of a movie or you use a 15-second song sample, that 100 years of case history and precedent regarding anything resembling fair use is on our side. If we were to ever be taken to court, it's easy to argue that taking a segment 
of a clip of a TV show or a song in no way harms the artist. In no way does it prohibit the artist from doing whatever the artist or the copyright holder wants. If I made a video and even showed 10 minutes of Star Wars, it would be impossible for Disney Lucasfilm to show uh, damages or that they were harmed in some way. It's all They all get around this. Not Nilk gets around this by having massive private companies. And we've heard this sort of thing even from our own people. It's a, pri it's a private company, Matt. Google, you too. You, you, they can do whatever they want because they're a private company. And you've heard this from me a few thousand times. No, it's a public trust. And they can't or should not be able to do whatever they want. Um, these platforms provide no copyright guideline. The reason they provide no guideline is it allows them to do whatever they want. If Matt uses one segment, not no, no, one second of a movie banned worldwide, where 20,000 channels could use 10 minutes of that same movie and no problem at all, they can apply whatever standards to whomever, whenever, or wherever they want. This case against Internet Archive, even though I just got done explaining how easy it is to qualify for fair use, it's going to be hard for them to push this one back. Um, tens of thousands of songs digitally archived and made available to anybody when 95% of those, I don't know the percentage, but a large percentage of those technically under copyright, current copyright law and protections for the copyright owner and artist. I don't see how they're going to get out of this one. It seems a lot like Napster, doesn't it, to a degree? And we know that was a big not nilk setup. Whatever Sean Parker or Sean Fanning knew or whatever they were in on or not or just used by not nilk that was a, a gigantic not nilk play to digitize everything. Nothing to do with the woe is me record companies. And it was all a gigantic ruse to push record industry and the music industry into what it is today. Of course, we saw that and talked about that 10 to 12 years ago. But this is similar. It seems similar to Napster. You can't just hold tens of thousands of songs under copyright. I don't like the copyright laws at all, of course. They're way too punitive. But I don't think they should not exist. I mean, if you make a song and you're a, a owner of a copyright for a song or an artist or the record company that makes the deal with the artist to own that song, fine, 25 years, 30 years. I mean, why should you hold copyright longer than that? The point is to hold copyright and allow you to make money and profit from it during the time in which it's popular. For a song, you know, 25 years, I think, makes sense. Paul Abdul, straight up, now tell me, are you going to be you? In 1988, I knew it was when I was in high school, I had to look it up. Hey, let Paul Abdul, whoever the record company, make money. 88, 90, 91, 92, 93. You think in 96 or when the grunge movement had come, you think anybody in the world gave a shit about, straight up now, tell me, they, they can't make any more money. They could have put the records out for free as paperweights and nobody would have taken them. They had a small window of time to take money. Maybe it should, to make money. Maybe take money is more, that's a Freudian slip, Matt. 12 years, maybe. 20, 25 years is fine because, Matt, some songs last longer. Have you ever heard of anything the Beatles ever did? Yeah, okay. Not, I, I'm not saying, you know, uh, Eleanor Rigby is straight up. Okay, I hear you, but 25 years makes sense. 25 years is enough for the Beatles to make their gigantic empire and the hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, what should it be, billions? Well, the not, Matt, the Not Knuckle is always going to make the rules for itself and its, its players. Well, yeah, and, and Pootie Tang Award. I know the Not Knuckle. That's what it's doing. It's making rules for itself. I'm just saying in, in a common sense world, there wouldn't, it wouldn't be all not milk making every single rule and regulation and code and ordinance always to benefit itself. There'd be a middle of the road. The people would actually have a say if the world were real, if you can believe that. So Paul Abdul, she can't make no money in 2004 on straight up or even opposites attract and that horse shit, dancing around with that cartoon and that horse shit. She, some songs have a longer, maybe movies should be 40 years. You know, Matt, should you be able to just take Star Wars and sell it on the street corner in 2005? You don't... Okay, I hear you. But 70 years now, it's 70 years after the death of the final copyright owner. I mean, we can't get our hands on some of these songs for free till like the year 2150. You know how old I'll be then? Let me summarize this video and we'll return to the way it started and the, re re <laughs> the reason for making it.
After 33 thrilling years of bringing you the latest news, reviews, and insights, Game Informer magazine is going away. Happened in a day or two, and in a matter of seconds, the entire internet, the archive of this first line here, the entire archive of thousands or tens of thousands of news, reviews, and insights all wiped out in a few seconds. And the reason this is happening, at least to me, is simple. The not milk in this history, in this uh, gaming archives, it, there's, there's a history there, a reality or a world that it doesn't like, that it wants to go away, especially what happened in the last century. It doesn't like that at all. And this is one example. Just It's a Gundam by himself pulled up the other the internet archives of MTV being wiped out. And if I had a week and I did nothing other than just investigate how much of these archives and websites were wiped out or being wiped clean, I don't know what I'll find. But I highly doubt this is a, this, there's two examples in the world. It's probably a trend. There's something in the history that the, the not know doesn't like. And if any family members are listening, I mean, they may something say something like what was said in Tommy Boy. I'm detecting your conspiracy again, Matt. And I would say, good, because I'm piling it on pretty thick. That's the way we see the world. Not because we just scratch our ass all day and watch cartoons, because we've been studying this adversary. Even many family members, very religious or very Catholic, they believe wholeheartedly that Satan is the adversary. Satan, that's what we say in Philly, is the adversary. So when we look and, and find the adversary of real spiritual beings, we're lunatics, but then they'll go right into church and hear about what Satan's trying to do. That's basically not milk. <laughs> That's basically what we do. There's an, a spiritual adversary here. It doesn't like certain things about the past where real spiritual beings operated in, a say, a natural way. It likes families where they have most of the kids that don't know what bathroom to use. And some would say back to me, let me get this straight. You and your Jimmy come up here, no appointment, no, no. You just think in, in, in a way to save a little bit of money, they're wiping out the internet because that saves money, but you think it's some grand scheme. Would you call it not milk or something? Some grand conspiracy to wipe out history when obviously it's just a company that wants to save some money. Um, see, it may seem that way, but all I can tell you is if you've been studying it 15 years closely, you start to, did you ever see the Matrix? You start to be able to read the Matrix code. Did you think Neo was crazy too? And since to potentially certain listeners, this presentation could never return to normal, let me go the full Monty, the full conspiracy Monty. Nobody said anything made about going the full Monty. The 33 present presentation here? No, uh, uh oh, it's not a coincidence. It's a reality marker. There's a lot of different possible ways to interpret it. Other than just coincidence, it could be it had to wait 33 years to make this sort of move. Either way, there's no doubt in anybody that's here that's been investigating reality for over 10 years that the 33 being used here is a coincidence. The chance of that is Blutarski's GPA, 0.0. .0. This image says, where are the Knights Templar today? And at the bottom it says, images may be subject to copyright. Yeah, we know that. I just covered that, you son of a beach. We, we, we know about your restrictive and punitive copyright laws. Leave us alone for once. It says, where are the Knights Templar today? And I don't claim to be no expert on this iteration, whatever that means, of the not nilk. But this is worth saying. I believe it's always been here. The adversary has always been here, but its power has risen exponentially. I don't believe its power has been consistent. Whatever the Knights Templar were, I don't really care. All the truthers love to dive into this horse shit. Who cares how it relates? Oh, Matt, don't you know they were at odds with the Catholic Church? Oh, sure. The Not Nilks never presented a story to us before. That. Friday the 13th, Matt, investigate that. Do your own research. Do your own. Oh, sure. I'm supposed to believe these stories. What did Brendan's brother in, not old school, in Step Brothers say? He said, guilty with the, st <laughs> guilty with the stories. He said, that, that's what Not Nilk is, guilty with the stories. Oh, they hunted him down on Friday the 13th. Man, the Templars were working for you. Hey, oh, this is all horse shit. It doesn't matter. It's all a different iteration, whatever that means, of the, of the same old power structure. It's designed, its role is to be in power here. That's fine. You want to be in power here? I don't. I want to be left alone. I want a not-milk-free zone. That's an NFZ. 
to you and me. I don't care about its struggle for pay. It's, it, whatever its role is, that sort of creature entity will be in power here. That's what it does on this plane of existence. Let it be in power. Who cares? But its power has risen just in terms of what we're looking at here and the history that is trying to wipe out and rewrite. Maybe a Time magazine will never wipe out its archives, but maybe it has the technological prowess to go back and make little changes to it. You don't think with its AI now it can can change history digitally? I'm sure it hates books. See, things have come through the real spiritual being here, have come from what they call the real human, their words, not ours, that it couldn't control in the past. Now it controls all media, just a few outlets for 98% of the world's data. It has control over everything, and it will push for more control through its AI. But I'm sure it hates books. Right now, or every day, it probably gets with Melvin and Bezo in those sorts of meetings, and it dreams up ways to eliminate libraries. It'll do with budget constraints. Every little town will have a budget constraint. Hit those small towns with budget constraints, but we can print up a trillion dollars a second. Don't give them any until they get rid of their library. Oh, and then just on their own, nobody's in on it, the, the city council of the small town in Iowa. They'll just decide on their own because they're on the Not Milk Frequency and Radio Station that maybe it's a good idea to eliminate the library. Nobody's going into the library anymore, and we can put everything on digital so then the Not Milk can either wipe it out or make its AI changes whenever it wants. Let's digitize everything and put it on the web because, oh, well, we have to keep these people going because they have a pension. Oh, but once we get rid of all these oldsters with their pension and everything, then we'll just eliminate the library. Look at all the funds that will be freed up in our town or city city for more DEI requirements. The mayors of small towns and cities and the city councils will believe that on their own, they're coming up with the great idea to save money by eliminating the local library when in fact the thoughts are not their own and they're on the not milk frequency. It'll be very similar to the famous James Earl Jones speech in Field of Dreams. People will come to Iowa People will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. People will eliminate libraries. <laughs> and mayors will eliminate libraries, Ray. They will most definitely eliminate libraries. People will turn down your driveway, Ray, and they won't even know why they're doing it. And you'll say, it's okay if you want to look around. It's just $20 a person. They'll hand over the money without even thinking about it because it's money they have and peace they lack. See, they didn't, they didn't know why they're coming to Iowa. All these mayors, see, they're on the download. Everybody in power anymore is on the download. They will do what the not milk wants. Right now, it is not convenient or expedient, whatever that means, for the not milk to eliminate libraries. But it will come. I assure you, it will come as surely as these people came to Iowa to see the baseball game. The not milk hates the printed written record. I'm way off topic to close with this, but I wanted to mention it. From a few videos back, I said something like, you know, in terms of the symbolism they use and all their esoteric horseshit and their Kabbalah and their Sephirot or whatever, whatever that is, I said, and I think it was in terms, I said something about alchemical symbols. I said, I don't give a shit. And somebody in the comments said, you're showing your ignorance now, Matt. You're show-. And you know what I said back? I said, you tell me why I need this stuff. Why do I need these alchemical symbols? I know many of you are into astro- astrology, and in some way the astrology does predict the way this world goes. We know the creeps here uh, make every move by their dark astrology, but why do I need it? To this person that said, you're showing your ignorance. I said, tell me why I need it. Do I, why I, I won't be able to move into the proper afterlife if I don't understand these little symbols. And what's the symbol for Saturn again? Did I pass that in the test? Or the, what the Kabbalah is and the Sephira? Oh, I need all that to, to do what I need to do as a spiritual being to move on past the material existence. I need these things. Guess what? That's one of the biggest not milk tricks. You need this. You need to do this. What did Dorothy do in Oz? Just ran around little tasks. Oh, I think I need to take the witch's broom because then I can bring the witch's broom back to the Wizard of Oz and then he'll give me what I want. Guess what? I, this is They need this shit. These role players here, these creeps, they need all their horse shit to keep themselves in power. I don't need any of this horse shit. Don't tell me that I'm showing my ignorance. You tell me why I need this to succeed in life, to give this, my spiritual whole what it needs out of this existence. I need little symbols. You've got to be kidding me. Thanks for listening.